What's good, everybody? Happy, happy Wednesday to you. Welcome to the closing beat. Got the day right today. We're off to a good start. We are financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth Managers, and hope you'll check us out. I wear the same shirt every day. You know what I mean? It's just out there. And now it makes a little more sense because you can kind of feel the fall in the air a little bit. Today's one of those weird days where it's like weirdly cloudy, but not stormy and sort of feels okay, not just killing you there. Anyways, uh, we're financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us here today. While other advisors are playing checkers, we are playing chess over here with our clients. And great example that a client said, I got a lot of money and just came into it. Don't want to say how, but they came into it and they said, I'm going to invest it. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> no, what are you doing? No, of course you're not going to invest it. Uh, number one, because they don't have to. They have earned the right to time the market. Timing the market is not something that we normally talk about or get excited about. But in this case, they've earned the right. They have enough money. They don't need a return at this point. So why take a chance now when maybe they can sort of scale in a little bit cheaper? So I love that as an answer because of Jazz Wealth, we don't grow as a company unless your accounts here that we manage grow, period. I love that as our business model there because it makes it to where we're here every day and not playing golf. Jeopardy question from yesterday was every recession followed this metrics decline. And I saw a lot of your, your guesses there. Really good guesses. And I probably would have guessed some of those as well. But the actual answer is what is housing starts? So if you look at housing starts, unfortunately, they are ticking lower. When you look at the declines here in the previous time periods, recessions followed afterwards there. Not every recession was caused because of a decline or started because of a decline in housing starts. But every time we had a recession, we had a decline in housing starts. It's a little bit weird to say that, but that's in fact the answer. So congratulations to the couple of you that got that right. Um, okay. Uh, we got the Fed out of the way. Right? Did you see it? It was the first time in a while that I didn't actually have a phone call right when Jerome Powell was speaking. Interestingly enough, I watched a little bit of it. I got distracted. I started walking around. I was playing the trumpet. I, you know, I, I, I pretend that I can play the trumpet anyways. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So we got that out of the way. We'll go over that. Um, we need now to solve for the, the uh, strikes that are going on. We need to get those people back to work. And then the stinking government shutdown. These guys are killing me with this government shutdown stuff. Uh, that could be in potentially two weeks. Now, the stock market is not historically as volatile as you would think with a government shutdown. They handle themselves pretty well, though. Uh, where you want to look is um, you see volatility in defense contractors, naturally, healthcare and government contract type companies, companies that could be tech related, but 90% of their business is from the government, hint, right? Give you a few ideas there. Those are the ones that naturally do the worst there. A little bit of a hiccup here. I don't hope this, I really hope this doesn't happen, but if the government shutdown goes long enough, multiple weeks, and we start finding ourselves into the thick of October and the government is shut down, there's an interesting thing that happens. The economic numbers that come from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, they come from the census, uh, the unemployment numbers that we look at, not the ADP numbers, but the jobs numbers, um, inflation, CPI, PPI, right? That's going to come out, uh, I think, around the 13th or something of October. They won't come out, right? Because the government shut down. So if, if that happens... And so it was interesting. The Fed today was kind of like, yeah, we're not going to talk about the government shutting down, but we would just try to figure out other ways to figure out how the economy is doing so they can make decisions. Because what did the Fed say today? If you didn't get a chance to watch it, Jerome Powell himself said, uh, there's going to be another rate hike before the end of the year. We have two more meetings to go. We're going to raise rates at the moment. It looks like we're going to have to raise rates. We will be data dependent and blah, blah, blah. Well, what happens if the data is not readily available and 100 percent available? How do they make decisions on data that they can't see? So things to consider there. It probably won't play out that way, but I thought that was kind of fun. Uh, extra level of thinking there. Now, the stock market, just like we talked about, it wasn't going to be a big up or down day until old Powell gets to the conversation there and starts mentioning what's going on. As that happened and it became clear, uh oh, one more rate hike yeah, right here. 
right? We start seeing weakness in the tech companies, right? They're the ones that need these lower rates or steady rates, we should say. And so if you were to look at like a five minute chart, where'd all the action happen today? Pew, right about the Fed meeting there. It started a little bit weaker before, I'll give you that, but it fits and starts and back and forth. And then we get the big sell off into the end of the day. So that's where the, actually that data is not accurate for whatever reason it's giving me, it's not, well, it was showing the end of the day. It was reporting as way earlier in the day. And so nonetheless, uh, we have a market that has sold off a little bit. The NASDAQ got the weaker end of the stick in terms of to total points decline on the day. 241 points. If you look across the board, you're going to find a bunch of tech stuff just not playing along. It also bled in a little bit into Bitcoin. You can see a slight movement here in gold. The Russell 2000 breaking below the 200-day moving average. That is your biggest Wait, how, how do I want to say it? That is your m index that's pulling back the most. There you go, right? I learned new words today. So uh, <laughs> I want to share new words. They're not bad words. I just learned new words that don't exist except for in the dictionary. And uh, was it what you, Cody, was nice enough to share those words with me? Well, someone did in our comment section. It wasn't us. I just didn't know. I just had never heard that word before. And it's a real word. It's a real word. It's it's one of those borderline words where, like, if you say it quickly, someone's going to go, say what? <laughs> My hands are sweating just talking about this. So. <laughs> Can I use it? I mean, technically, it's a real word. It's just we know your motive behind it. So that's, you know. I know. I I would be using the word to, to try to play on the fence there. You know what I mean? Right. It's not a bad word. Like, if your kid said it, you'd be like, excuse me? Oh, that's what you said. We okay. toss it into one of these shows by the end of the week, just nonchalantly. I could toss it in there? but In like an actual sentence, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm excited now. Okay. So anyways, I learned a new word, so my mind's all jumbled up here, and I, I can't think of the appropriate words to use today. Um, as you guys know, mostly I'm one of those advisors that I, I don't use the big words. You know what I mean? I, I'm not trying to impress you. I impress you with the returns, right? We, we grow. I give you some planning. We figure out how to lower your taxes, all that good stuff. That's what I'm trying to do. If we look at bonds, they sold off just a little bit here. That sucks. So remember, prices moving lower means yields going higher. These little boogers just refuse to bounce, whether you're looking short term or long term. The uh, short end of the curve, when you hear that on TV or whatever, that's the, that's the earlier bonds, right? That's where you get into one year, two year, five year, 10 year. Now you start stretching out to the longer end of the curve. That's your 20 and 30 years. Uh, so that's what they mean by that. Unfortunately, uh, higher rates short and long term. Uh, crude oil continuing to pull back there ever so slightly. Just thought I'd point that out for you in case that's something you were interested in. It is pulling back. Awesome. Great. But remember, you're going to see people talk about the amount of people that are short. They're not actually short, right? We talked about that yesterday. A uh, little bit of misconception there when we look at things like that. Y you could look at something like energy. Now, you can make the argument here. You just can't do that in the futures market. Nonetheless, they all pulled back there. Um, so we're going we're gonna to go a couple different places here today, right? Because you basically have the Fed. We know what happened there. We'll talk about that. We know what's coming up. And now it's kind of a wait and see. So one of the stocks in the news here today, uh, was, over the last couple of days, has been Disney. Slight update here today. Uh, Disney's swinging back at some of the naysayers out there by investing twice the amount that they were going to invest over the next 10 years in what they call uh, their parks and experiences. If you look on their earnings report, it would be under the category D D P R E, right? Uh, Disney parks and experiences. And then that doesn't include products. So when we look at that category there, um, about 60% of their operating income comes from parks and experiences still. So it's an important category of their business. They said, we're going to invest $60 billion over the next 10 years in parks and experiences. And the argument there is, well, the streaming thing is awfully costly and it's hurting our income in the stock, by the way. Yeah, it's not looking so good there. Um, they just had an investor summit here in Orlando, not here, but right by us here in Orlando. Uh, they didn't announce how they're going to invest. So in order for the stock to start bottoming out and people to get a little bit more motivated to invest again, we've got to drop the political stuff, but that'll come with time. Uh, but we've got to get into how are you going to invest it? Because if you're just going to go build one of those Star Wars hotels that you did that was a massive, massive flop and they're actually going to close it down, well, that's not a good return on your investment. I'm sure they learned from that and they won't be doing that, but they've decided they're going to invest in themselves. Here's the problem. See the stock's performance. Obviously, it hasn't bottomed out yet. 
right? There's, there's no exciting rally here. And, oh, well, we're excited now. You're going to invest all this money. Why is that? Do you remember when I shared this with you? Looks a little geeky. Hang with me here for a second. This is the economic cycle. We come from a trough into a rebound, into a peak, or what we would call the expansion phase, the last part of the expansion phase. Then we start sort of Losing interest in that, prices get a little extended, right? We start slowing down a little bit. We're here. Okay, and then we work ourselves into the next trough, potentially with a recession. That's the economic cycle. You've, you've seen that. That's not very fancy there. Well, what we did is a study a while back to show the returns of stocks based on how they choose to use their money during different economic cycles. In other words, when things are good, we want to see that you're doing that. You're, you're expanding, you're investing in yourselves, you're growing, you're trying to make as much out of people as you can, give as much product or service as you can to the market. When we're starting to slow down, though, we don't want to see you expanding into a slowdown, right? Investors don't want to see that. Well, we are here. And now they're going to expand. So that's part of the reason. We know that you're expanding into a slowdown. This could be a little bit of trouble here. So we look at the performance of the market individually relative to uh, and broke it into stocks that are choosing to invest in themselves, stocks that are choosing to uh, just keep the cash, not do anything, and stocks that are choosing to give money back to the shareholders in the form of dividends, which Disney's got to work on, and uh, maybe just buying back shares. So if you look through it here, or there's my mouse, uh, as you look through it here, you can see that the better performing areas of the market are those during a, a slowdown are those that choose to give money back to shareholders. Here's Disney. Now, this is not Disney, but here's what their sort of roadmap is based on what they announced. They're going to invest in themselves. They're going to take their, their CapEx and they're going to put it into their parks and stuff. That's not the best in terms of getting a return from shareholders. It's just what people think. And it's common sense. It's economics 101. If the economy is slowing down, not because it's in trouble, but because we, we've peaked, we've already you know, spent our money and this is a normal cycle. If that starts happening, when you're expanding, now we have more hotels, right? We have more rides. We're hoping people uh, drive as attendance, but we don't have the money. We don't want to go anymore. We're, we're busy paying for gas and paying for our stuff. So we can't go. That means your investment doesn't return what it, what it should, right? So it's a long way of saying all of that. Uh, interestingly enough, I did a little research. I was like, what if Disney had an unlimited amount of money and they could just expand in Orlando without risk of running out of money? Do they have the room to do that? They've got 1,000 acres of land left still in Orlando. I don't know how. I've flown over that numerous times. I've no, I don't see it, but I guess it's there. Um, they've only developed about 30% of what's available that they have there in the Disney, Walt Disney World sort of resort area in Orlando. So they've got a lot of room to work over there. And uh, they've got to kick some bears out and stuff, though, before they before they do that. All right, before we move into stocks in the news, I'm going to do one more thing here for you. I get the question a lot, reinvest your dividends or not reinvest your dividends? And since this is a stock market show, I thought, let's make it relevant to the market, right? So if you, the first thing I always ask somebody is, what are you investing in? If you are going to ask that question, where are those dollars going? Are they being invested in something that primarily drives its returns from dividends? Or is it being invested in something that primarily is a growth-oriented stock or ETF or whatever it is? All right, take a look. Here's the breakdown of everything here. So we used all the sectors in the S&P in addition to the S&P ETF so that you guys could look at this as well. Uh, the NASDAQ ETF, most popular one, the Russell 2000, and the Dow. Okay. So for example, the S&P 500, uh, this is the original ETF. This is brand new. I mean, this is day one. This was the first one in uh, ETF and the first index ETF to come out in January of 1993. Since its inception, it's gained 871. Uh, it's gained a little bit more than that now. This is a little dated, I guess, but it's gained a bunch of points there. Total of about a 1,570% return. Annualized 8%, I'm uh, sorry, annualized, Jesus, you have about a 10% total return annualized, right? 8% return price-wise, 10% when we include dividends. 44% of the total returns over its lifetime have come from dividends. So if you didn't reinvest your dividends, you're missing out. Okay, so that one's pretty important. Whereas, contrary to that, you have the NASDAQ. 15% of its total returns, total returns, have come from dividends. Okay, so if you didn't reinvest your dividends there, I don't know, why you wouldn't, I guess, but it doesn't have as great of an impact on you. 
right? Also note that it says 10% total returns annualized for the SPY. I thought the average return was 7%. It is, uh, but we say 10% before inflation. So if you ever hear me do a video and I say, let's do 10% returns, but somewhere along the way, I back out inflation after that, I'll inevitably, I'll get a comment from somebody saying 10%, you're, you're ridiculous, you're never gonna happen. Well, actually it was 7%. Uh, so that's that breakdown. Now, a lot of you like to go individual sectors. There are times where you want to have more tech. Everybody asks me this. Um, I, I want to be more weighted in tech right now. I don't want to be in utilities as much. And, you know, we shift over time. Well, utilities, by the way, would have the greatest dividend return on the long term. This in this case, since 1998, when it come out or when it's came out, uh, because the total price returns only 4.1%. So you really need to reinvest your dividends there if you want the highest total return out of the utility sector. And that makes sense because they pay high dividends there, right? Uh, communication services, not so bad. If you're investing for growth and you don't care about the dividends, that's an easy one to pick on. But it's also an easy one to say, if you don't reinvest your dividends and you want to take whatever little dividends they pay and put it in the S&P or put it in utilities to soak some of that up, I can understand that, right? So you see the game here that you're playing. You re you're reinvesting in utilities. But if you have something like healthcare, uh, communication services, consumer discretionary, those are not driving a lot of their returns from the dividend. So if you take those dividends and put them elsewhere, you're squeezing out that little extra bit. That's the main like point I'm trying to make here is just simply reinvesting dividends is cute and certainly, you know, advantageous. But what if you could take the extra dividends, still leave the growth, take those dividends and go somewhere where you're getting a little more bang for your buck in terms of total returns. So I know that wasn't really relevant to today's stock market, but I get that question a lot and I've been meaning to share that with you guys. So I hop in there. I give you that. Something to think about now. You're going to have something to think about tonight. Go home and tell the missus, like, well, listen, you, you take the dividend and you put it, I don't know, something. He watched the video. <laughs> All right. Ford, a little bit of a Christmas tree type performance here. Christmas tree meaning uh, red and green, red and green, red and green. If we look at Ford, they said uh, uh, they tried to have some good news today, and it wasn't easy. They said, uh, well, we have some labor disputes, uh, some contract issues up in Canada, and we think we've reached an agreement with them. They're negotiating with us. Right? They respond to us when we submit a new offer, and it uh, seems they may have come to something there. They tried. Uh, they tried to put some good news out there. It, it didn't work. The stock went down, but I don't think they care. Uh, all right, you got Pinterest here. They're buying back a billion dollars worth of shares. This is a little bit of a bigger deal for Pinterest because this is approaching 20% of the total value of the company. That's pretty impressive. Returning cash to shareholders gets you what? Let's, let's reference the chart, all right? I'll come over here and see. Uh, so we are here. And then, let's see, we're going to do this uh, balance sheet strength return check. Okay, cool. So that means the performance, oh, it should be better, right? What happened? Well, it's return cash to shareholders. We get rewarded, right? So they know the game. They've seen the slide. They watch the show. Um, Cody, C-O-T-Y, not Cody. Uh, so Cody, they make makeups and lotions and potions and whatnot. They've all of a sudden become bullish. They they were not that way just two quarters ago, but they've decided, oh, we're, we're bullish now. We expect to see sales up 8 to 10 percent uh, over the uh, what would be their 2024 year. And obviously that's helpful. Right? Well, they were pretty negative for a while there and they've changed their tune. Uh, A.J. Gallagher, uh, if you want to be a millionaire, the most amount of millionaires in this United States anyways, the most amount of millionaires are created from the insurance companies. That's actually a fact. Uh, that, that's not me like bashing anybody. And A.J. Gallagher happens to participate in that space. Well, they have lots of millions. They had about 510 million just sitting around doing nothing. And they said, uh, we're going to buy this other insurance uh, company and try to consolidate a little bit. Stock price is higher. It's a well-run machine there. I won't. I will never pick on them for that. They do good, good stuff there in terms of how they operate their business. A uh, little bit of volatility over here in General Mills that you don't normally see. A bit of a flush out here this morning. They report their earnings there. Uh, everything was better than expected. They raised guidance and everything. So a little bit of, um, you know, people trying to guess the bottom there. Right? Oh, things are good, getting better. Good earnings report. Everything's fine there. Maybe I'll take a shot. And that's why you have what you have there. Uh, Jazz After Dark, if you want to come hang out with me, we're going to talk about I'm going to ask a question. I, I still don't know how I feel about this. Should the government, because they want to do this, should the government 
tell credit card companies, you can't have an interest rate higher than this. No, you're not allowed to do that. You have to be here. You could be lower, but you have to be here, right? Should the government be getting involved in that? We're going to talk about that tonight on Jazz After Dark. I will take your questions here as I get prepared uh, and uh, see if I can answer your questions. Uh, earnings tomorrow are going to be Darden Restaurants and Rite Aid. Uh, Darden Restaurants being the ones you're familiar with. They, oh, Rite Aid's only a 70-cent company. I, I didn't know that. Uh, so that's really it. That, that's all that's coming out there. Uh, see what questions you have and if I can help. Oop, don't bring this little booger right here. And uh, now I'll be able to see your questions there. Jay says Disney doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> He's mad. Well, I charge so much money. I looked at a, I was going to go over there in a couple weeks and I looked at hotel rooms on the property, the various hotels that they have. Um, $800, the ones that were available, $800 all the way up to $2,200 a night. No, I don't think so. I, I, I'm going to pass. Yeah. End phase pop up. Oh, there's life is good there. You like your end phase. How'd it do today? We're going to start checking in on this. I, I have a feeling you have a very sizable position here and you'd, you'd like for this to go well. Uh, so uh, yeah, there you go. A percent and a half. All right. Yeah. Why not just buy a dividend ETF? Uh, Jeff is uh, asking that question. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It, a lot of people won't do that in a taxable account. You lose out. You could be more diverse or just buy the positions the ETF has. Uh, at least get the tax advantage there, I hope. You know, why not get that one extra advantage there? Yeah. Uh, did Eric move over the sedge yet? I'm trying to talk him into it. I have a feel. The other day I thought I might have had him, uh, Swamp Rat. I thought I might have had him there. I had everything ready. I'm like, here's my account number, man. You know what I mean? I'm willing to take it, but no, he has not. He is, uh, he's riding, ride or die, as they say. <laughs> uh, Dennis says, hell no, the government should set interest rates, uh, sh should set interest rates for credit card companies. Be a free market. That's where I'm going on this one. It doesn't, but I, they're wanting to do this because there's a problem, you know, and that's part of what I want to talk about is like, well, hey, there's a problem. Let's go after the problem. Let's just not put a cap on the problem. So I think that's the way. I think that's the way I'm going there. It's up to government to regulate that type of thing, or this will be the wild, wild west. You don't think, JB, that at some point, if um, credit card interest rates were 95%, that we would change what we do? You know what I mean? I mean, like if the government gives you a subsidy to buy an electric vehicle, a lot of people take advantage of that. Okay. If they made it night, like if I went to a restaurant, and like a taco or whatever was normally five bucks and all of a sudden it was $75. I'm not buying it. You know, there's some extreme there, right? I get that. Um, but I don't know. I don't know, Joe. It's just been one thing after another here, Joe. Uh, I, I really, really, really want to go that way. And that is still on the books there. But every time we solve for one thing, there's been another thing. Then there's been a hurricane. Then we had COVID going around the office. I didn't get it, but... Uh, it, you had it, right, Kevin? Did you have COVID? You had COVID at some point, right? He was sick the other day, did you have? It was a cold cough or whatever. Sure, yeah, that's why she's sick. That's what happened. It was you. I'm putting the pieces together. I'm figuring it out. Actually, I can't be mad at Kevin today. He bought me chicken wings, or got me chicken wings, right? They were good, too. Uh, Disney hotels are more expensive than the Seminole Hard Rock. Oh, yeah, right? especially by us. Uh, opinions on uh, adding to Morgan Stanley. IPOs are coming back. IPOs are coming back. Uh, I'm seeing more and more discussion about that. Um, and we, we're probably going to use that as one of our slow day type examples there. I got a lot of good stuff to share there. Uh, so if you think that's coming back, there's a couple things to look at. You could even use the IPO uh, ETF, the most popular one. It's the Renaissance uh, the IPO. Uh, that's the name of it. Hey, Dustin, or Tom says, uh, Dustin, you think this is the start of the next leg of the cell for the SPY? So I hope so. Yeah, I really do. Uh, I would like to see that. However, isn't this average year performing exactly like the averages? That's where I keep getting stuck. And as I scroll, I'm hoping to find that exact thing here. So the, oh, it's in the notes from Jazz. So yeah, that's where I put it. Uh, if you're a client, it's in the notes from Jazz, how the whole year, 
has been really average so far compared to history, all the way back to 1945. And September so far has been exactly like the average, you know, like clockwork. So we'd still have more downside if that continues. Yeah. Uh, Jay Brown says, favorite jazz album. Just because it's nostalgic, I'm going to go Porgy and Bess, uh, Louis Armstrong. Uh, but current day, live from the inside, Brian Culbertson. I'll give you that. huh? How's that? Right there. That's how you know I'm not making it up. Don't abuse credit, Dennis says. Man. Jamie says, regarding capping credit card rates and will people make logical decisions, I present to you payday loans. That's fair. That's fair. I think there's always going to be outliers, though. You know what I mean? And if the Fed comes up with the CBDC, if they really go through with that, that's kind of the end for them, right? Those types of companies. That might be the end if we're, if we're not using uh, cash or anything. Yeah. Life is good. You are all about the solar stuff, man. I like it. <laughs> don't bring the coat. Yeah, I don't have it. I think for a couple days there, I felt a little odd, and I don't know if it was in my head, but I'm, I, I'm doing good. I'm here. The government should include financial education of public schooling. Yeah, that's one of those things that whatever side you land on, Democrats, Republicans, we agree on that, right? Could we not start solving for things that we agree on? I think a lot of people would say that. Yeah, oh boy. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll wrap it up there. I got you guys fired up now. We'll let you go on to your comment sections and your rough lifes on the Twitter and all this, those places where you leave your uh, comments there. We'll be back tomorrow, of course. We'll do this all over again. I'll see you tonight for uh, Jazz After Dark. You want to come hang out? Let's talk about that, that credit card thing because it's kind of bugging me a little bit. Anyways, you enjoy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.